Sota, Liva Bacosa, and then a Sota, the Athena knows of Pagosa, he and then a Mohosata, Lara di Macosa, Tena Musa Paco, the Catana Macuse, Atiba Robi Masuta, Ashata Tata, Atema Roco Masute, the Apaposa Cala, Arani Masota, Ashata Tena Macota. Greetings to you wherever you may find yourself. We are once again here to share the word of God with you. This word is coming to you from Assemblies of God Ghana at our head office. We've been discussing and studying the book of Galatians, a book that Apostle Paul wrote to the churches in the province of Galatia. As we've already stated, Paul and Barnabas has gone there to preach the gospel. They have won comforts after they return to Antioch in Syria. Judaizers or legalist group of people went there to tell them that unless you also add the mosaic laws of circumcision and other rituals, you can't be saved. That is, the death of Christ should be supplemented by the laws. When Paul heard this, he wasn't very happy, so he wrote to them, addressing them that they should not in any way be swayed by these Judaizers or these legalistic preachers. And of course, Paul has told them that this gospel has been approved by the apostles, and this is the true gospel. He is now going to present his gospel in details. Paul is now going to base on scriptures to tell them that what he has taught them is the truth. This morning, I'm reading from Galatians chapter 3, 1 to 14, where Paul will ask them a series of questions. And after that, he will conclude that one is justified by faith and not by law or works. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 up to 14. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before your very eyes? Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain, if it really was in vain? So again, I ask, does God give you His Spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law, or by you are believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. I understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to them. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, 
Curse is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not blessed based on faith. On the contrary, it is based on person who does these things. We live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone who is hung on the pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham had come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Like I've said er earlier, Paul is now expanding his position. What is his position? The position is that one is justified by faith. One's salvation is based on believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work. You do not supplement it, and I repeat, you do not supplement it by any acts of the law. So, by circumcision, or by following special rituals, or by following certain traditions, they are all not part of the salvation package. Then he began to ask them six questions. And after the six questions, he will draw his conclusions. And uh, let's see what Paul does. Does Paul approach the Galatians in asking these questions seem unusual? When God called out, where are you, Adam? God called for Adam. It was not for information, but it was for restoration. Jesus also knows that Peter, the devil, has wanted to sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you. So some of these rhetorical questions establishes points. We establish a doctrine on the basis of what, what God word teaches. In addition to correct interpretation of scriptures, what does Paul use to support his arguments? Paul bases his arguments on scriptures. Paul will ask the Galatians questions. And these questions does not come to condemn but it is a, a, a didactical method, a way he teaches to bring them along to the truth. And the first question is, you foolish Galatians who be, bewitch you. Paul calls the Galatians foolish, not because they are mentally deficient, but rather because they have failed to distinguish between the truth and the error. These intelligent people should have Descend the false teaching of the Judaizers. Instead, they were acting as though a magician has bewitched or cast a spell over them. In a word, they were deceived. So Paul did not take this lightly when he rebuked them. You foolish Galatians. It was not a statement of insult or offense, but he just couldn't believe why. After they have believed the truth, will allow themselves to be deceived. Can a believer be deceived today? Yes. Consider what Jesus says in Matthew 24, 4 and 11. Which statement explains how a believer can be deceived? Examine everything in the light of the word, the, the, what God's word says. Determine all sides of the argument before deciding who is right. Determine to be led by what you believe the Holy Spirit has to say. Trust in your own understanding of the truth. Before your very eyes, Jesus was clearly portrayed as crucified. Paul has teach them the truth. They have believed it, but now they are being changed or they want to go and follow Mosaic laws. Through Paul's teachings, the Galatians should have detected an error, as William Hendrickson indicates. These false teachers told them that their faith in Christ must be supplemented by Mosaic ritualism. And the Galatians, by yielding to this, to this influence, had failed to understand that Christ supplemented 
is a Christ supplanted. Christ supplemented is Christ supplanted. If you take anything, add anything to the gospel, you have taken away the gospel. In effect, Paul blamed the doctrinal error on Galatians on the demonic forces, Judaizers, and Galatians themselves. Someone who has bewitched you, the expression, a Christ supplemented, is a Christ supplemented means that if any requirements are added on our faith in Christ's sacrifice, death on the cross of our salvation, the benefits of his sacrifices are eliminated or made superior, dependent upon the meaning, meeting, of those requirements. Period. According to Paul, believers are deceived or bewitched if they add anything to the truth of the gospel. The second rhetorical question he asks, did you receive the spirit by the words of the law or by believing what you heard? Apparently, before Paul left this Galatia region, region, before the the, the Judaizers came. These people have been filled and have received the Spirit and, and they were enjoying all the good things the Lord gave. So that means that they were saved. They were sealed by the Spirit. They were children of God before the Judaizers came in. So my brother and sister, if today you have accepted the gospel, you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, you are living a holy life, you are enjoying the truth of the gospel, and then another person comes to add, then you must watch. Did you receive the Spirit by words of the law or by believing what you heard? Paul identifies conversion to Christ with receiving the Spirit. Receiving the Spirit validates our relationship to Christ. Compare this with Peter's ministry to Cornelius and his household. The Jews became convinced that those Gentiles were truly converted when they understood that Cornelius had, and others had received the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, 44, 48 and Acts 11, 15 to 18. Notice also that Jesus said to Nicodemus when he explained about being born again, so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. The Spirit reveals Christ to us and draws us to him, John 16, 7 to 11. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he, they do not belong to Christ. So Paul questions to the Galatians, how did you receive the Spirit? Was it by observing the law or by faith? Obviously, the Galatians began their Christian life by believing in the gospel. The majority of them were Gentiles who knew nothing about the law at that time of the conversion. It was later through false teachers that they were introduced to the, to the law observance. That means the Galatians has believed in God, believed in Christ, saved, <coughs> received the Spirit. Why then are they confused? Then goes to the third question. Are you foolish? After beginning by means of uh, the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? This question is linked to the previous one. Paul contrasts the Spirit, the pneuma, with the human efforts, the circles or flesh. The Christian life is supernatural from beginning to the end. We can neither save nor perfect ourselves by our own efforts. Spiritual growth like salvation is the work of the Spirit. He who began a good work in you will carry it even unto the completion until the day of Christ. So they believed in the Spirit. They were saved. Why were they then want to perfect their salvation by going to do the works of the flesh, circumcision and the rest? So Paul was saying, Christian journey is a spiritual journey. Once you have begun in the spirit, you progress in the spirit, you mature in the spirit, you march on in the spirit. You don't start by believing in Jesus as Lord and Savior and then you bring human traditions like circumcision, like obeying certain laws or certain rules or certain rituals. To Paul, it is unfortunate. Then fourth question. Have you suffered so much in vain if it really was in vain? It means since some of them believed, they might have gone through persecution. They've gone through suffering. 
Some of them have suffered. If you go to Acts chapter 13 and 14, when they believed. The hardships. And will they do all these things if there wasn't truth in the gospel? So he was telling them that. Perhaps these believers were persecuted and had suffered for Christ as Paul and Barnabas did when they planted the Galatian churches. Luke summary suggests this. They revisited the churches they had planted, encouraging and strengthening them and saying, we must go through many hardships to enter into the kingdom of God, as 14.22 and also verses 21 to 23. You can see these verses. If they now turn to from their faith in Christ and the work of the Spirit to faith in human effort, their suffering is in vain. So Paul has said, you are fools. You have been deceived if you follow man rediments. Paul says, you have received the Holy Spirit not by obeying the law. Paul is saying, if you accept these things, you begin by the Spirit and you continue in the flesh, then that is unfortunate. Paul is saying, what about your suffering, your persecution and hardship? The question can be translated. Did you experience so many things in vain? Now, in addition to possible suffering, experience includes blessings such as salvation, receiving the Spirit and the miracles by turning from faith to law, Observers, all these experiences, whether positive or negative, were for nothing. That leads us to the next verse. Does God give you the spirit and work miracles among you by works of the law or by be believing what you heard? It means when they believed the gospel, they saw miracles, they saw healings, they saw blessings. Things were going on well for them before the Judaizers before the legalistic group came and deceived them. Paul explains a part of the continued work of the Spirit in the churches. The question is, how do these miracles come to pass? By your effort to keep the law or by faith? The term observance of the law here does not refer to obedience or disobedience to God. Rather, it means trying to attain you are go by human effort. We must not depend upon human effort for our salvation. Jesus was associated faith with the Spirit when he said, Let anyone who is thirsty come and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, rivers of living waters will flow through within him. Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit who will be given. To everyone who has faith in him. John 7, 37 to 39. The word among you in Galatians can also be translated according to Hendricks as within you. Hendrickson explains that miracle can refer to outward manifestation of God's power, such as healing, prophecies, and speaking in tongues, and also to inward healings, prophecies, arid miracles in tongues, and also inward fruit, such as faith, hope, love, and the rest. All that we are saying here is that from Galatians 3, 1 to 5, Paul just poses a series of questions to tell them that all the good things and the benefits that they enjoyed in the Lord, they enjoyed it when they knew nothing about the law. When they need, knew nothing about the circumcision, when they knew nothing about the Jewish rituals, so they should not go back to bring these things into their new fan faith. So Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham became the father of all the faithful ones. It was after that that he received the law the covenant of circumcision. He had already been counted righteous before the covenant of circumcision came, before the Israeli race even started. So for Abraham to be the father of all, includes the Jews and the non-Jews through an act of faith. 
Verse 7, read this. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance. All nations of the world will be blessed through you. So, those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So, Abraham's descendants do not, uh, it's not only the Jews, but also all those who will come to God through faith, who will be justified by faith. This is very, very clear. So, don't make anyone a natural descendant of Abraham. Don't allow anyone to behave like a Jew, to eat like a Jew, to talk like a Jew, to walk like a Jew, to have circumcision, or the Jewish to live within the Abrahamic covenant, the, I mean the earthly covenant, before he enjoys the blessings of Abraham, which is justification by faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under the curse. As it is written, curse is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in this. Listen, the Jews, let us start from Moses when the law was given. Until the coming of Christ, the law could not save them. It rather became a burden for them. Failure upon failure upon failure upon failure. It brought them a, a, a disaster. It, it could not save them. That was the main reason that Christ came to lift you and I up, to take the law of our shoulders and to allow us to believe in God by faith. The law was there to show man's weaknesses. The law was there to show man's helplessness. The law was there to tell you how man has failed and continued to fail and that through the words of the law, no one can get saved. So in the law, we see our weaknesses. The law leads to death. The law leads to curse. That is why the Bible says that Curse is everyone who lives under the law. Curse is everyone who does not continue to do everything. So if you want to be saved by the law, then it is not only the Ten Commandments. It is the 617 Levitical Codes. The rules and the ordinances, the ceremonial laws, and all the legalistic laws, and all, and all, and all. It doesn't work. It doesn't save. The law is like carrying a big load of a burden. And that this burden is suppressing you. And that you cannot take it away. And the more you think you are succeeding, the more you are carrying more load. Christ has taken away the burden of the law from us. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because righteousness will, the righteous will live by faith. If you want to live by the law, if you want to live by the written code, then read the whole of Leviticus and day by day follow them and see how you can survive. It is impossible. All the sacrifices, all the festivals, all the ordinances, all the nitty gritty of all, everything that is written in it, written in them, it does not work. More of a burden than the Hammurabi law code. Christ has come to set us free, you and I free, just as our father Abraham lived by faith, you and I are to live by faith. By our faith in Christ, we are justified. Justification means just as if we have 
not sin. Christ, God takes away our sins and put it on Christ and we are declared righteousness. Justification means divine acquittal. It looks as if we've been taken to court. We have a problem. And the problem was that we are going to die because of our problem. And Christ comes in and says, hey, I am Christ. It is because of Frimpon Manson that I came to die. So I am taking away all his burden upon me so that Frimpon will be free. So we are declared righteous before God by believing in Christ. That is what is meant by justification. No law. No law. If our righteousness can save, then Christ is died in vain. If you go to Galatians 2, the 15, 16, 17, it says that just as we the Jews know that our law code cannot save us, we have also believed in Christ and in believing in him that we are saved. So, no more laws, 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 laws. We should not live by the course of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. Contrarily, it says, the person who does these sins will live by them. So if you follow the law, you cannot live by faith. The law is visible. The law is carnal. The law is servitude. The law is natural. And you cannot live by the law and then live by faith. It is either or. Believing in Christ alone for your salvation. Believing in Christ and the law rather doesn't work. That is why it is written. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For as it is written, curse is everyone who is hung on the tree. He redeemed us. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham must come to the Gentiles through Christ so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So by believing in Christ, you receive the promise. The promise that was given to Abraham. You are a child of Abraham by faith, not by the law. There will be a time where Paul will explain between the natural descendants and the spiritual descendants. There will be a time where he will talk about the law and grace. He will talk about the good covenants, the two covenants. But for now, suffice it to say that Paul is saying that Galatians, you were saved, you received the Spirit, you received the miracles, you, go, you went through hardships and pains. All the experiences that you had was because you have believed in Christ by faith. Why are you now going back to add anything? There is no postscript. There is no addendum. There is no special addition. There is no footnote. Please, Christ and Christ alone. No more addition, no more subtraction. If you add anything, you have made the, 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 the death of Christ ineffective. Brethren, going back and to finish this message, I am saying Paul has told the Galatians that they are fully because they have been deceived. They have been deviated. They have been hypnotized or bewitched. A spell has been cast, cast on them by these Judaizers. And Paul was saying that you experienced so much in Christ before all these things came, before these people came. So if you are not adding it, then what about that, the one that you believe? Was it fake or it was reality? Then he continued to say that, Abraham was justified by faith. We are also being justified by faith. We should walk by faith. We should live by faith. We should act by, act by faith. And we should not put ourselves into any servitude. Because if you bring the law unto yourself, then you are under a curse. Thank you for hearing me. After hearing this message, if you want to give your life to Christ, it is simple. Acknowledging the fact that you are a sinner and that Christ died for your sins. 
You invite him to your heart and you live for him. Jesus wants you. It is free. It is a gift. It is not something you should earn. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you for the privilege of hearing your word. We pray that you help us to live by your word and live by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This message that is being preached has come to you from Assemblies of God, Ghana. We invite you to listen to us this Sunday afternoon and every Sunday. Remember, maintain your social distancing, use your face masks, and wash your hands regularly. COVID-19 is real, and we need to protect ourselves, and we need to protect our nation, and we need to protect one another. It has been wonderful for me to come to you today. I'm looking forward to see you next week. God bless you. Please take care. Bye-bye. He is God. He is telling us, come to me. Stop worrying. Begin to run to him and you will make everything new. He said, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it.